My name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. Welcome to my podcast. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. And uh, today, the uh, episode is about reference ranges in labs. And why I'm doing this is because in our previous podcasts, uh, a lot of comments that I've gotten were people asking, like, what is the reference range? What What is the lab value I should be going for? Because one of the things I stand by as a physician is using lab work to direct what I do. I believe that physicians should be using lab work on the regular to understand what's happening with our patients. This would be an example like someone presents to clinic uh, with PMS uh, or PMDD or any of that nature, instead of just putting them on oral contraceptives, let's see why they're having PMS. And the most common cause of PMS medically is low progesterone. So in the lab work we would run those cases is like, what's their progesterone? We would want to see what would be inhibiting progesterone, maybe prolactin, something like that. Um, and we would run these labs to understand the woman in front of us. If I were to just give her oral contraceptives when she came in the office, it's basically just me suppressing her symptoms because oral contraceptives suppress the natural production of hormones in your body. So whenever I have the patient come in and I'm just, you know, if I want to be lazy, which I don't, you know, I'll put them on oral contraceptives if I want to be a caring physician because that's what they came to see. I will understand them. I'll run the labs. I'll figure them out. And then the question becomes, what are the lab values we look for? How do we understand the lab values in front of us? In the past, when people commented asking me to give them lab values, I've always been very hesitant because lab values are a very dynamic thing and they're kind of complicated. And, and I spent the better part of the past three months trying to figure out how to put together a series of presentations for you guys. And um, I have a bunch. We're going to make a whole new category on the YouTube channel that just has interpreting labs. I forgot to tell you that. That's fine. Surprise. It's like, because <laughs> it's just, I think that it's good for people to kind of understand no, what their good. labs mean and they able to go back to it. And then I'll have citations in the description so they can. Uh, so understanding reference values, why, why is it um, confusing? And uh, why can't I just give you the number? Well, like, let's go back to my example I gave you a moment ago. A patient presents to clinic again with PMS or, or PMDD or anything cycle related. You know, when you go to your doctor, this happens. They will just run, if they're going to run a test, they'll just run a random progesterone panel, a random estrogen progesterone. They're not timing it specific to your cycle. So as I mentioned in previous, previous podcasts, you know, the first half of a, a cycle for a woman, estrogen is dominant in those first two weeks. And the second half of the cycle, it's going to be progesterone dominant for the next two weeks. If I run a progesterone panel in the first two weeks, that doesn't tell me anything. It's useless information. And if a doctor interprets that and uses that information to decide how they're treating their, their patient in front of them, they're not using good information to make that decision. You have to understand the timing of the labs. So that's one reason why it's complicated is the timing. The other one, and this is a tough one, is the reference ranges. And that's what today's presentation is all about, is understanding reference ranges. Reference ranges, for some reason or another, I don't know why, have become this like, hmm, monolithic thing in medicine where people are like, you have to keep inside this reference range. And so long as it's inside the reference range, you're fine. And sadly, even most physicians don't understand what reference ranges really are. Sometimes they only practice to the reference range because it's colored in the, in the, in the uh, so you get your lab back. If it's out of the reference range, they, put, they turn it the red. <laughs> the piece of paper. Oh, it's red, so I got to treat the red or they bold it or something to make it, oh, this is, oh, this is important. And anything that's not outside the reference range is fine. And that is not true. That's not accurate. So today's presentation, I'm going to drill down into that. And I hope by the end, you have a better understanding of what the reference ranges are. And so that way, when you go to your clinic and you see your physician, and even though you're in the reference range, but you're in this section of the reference range over here and not over here, you're able to articulate why you want to be here you're able to understand better understand why it's better to be here or in some cases over here okay so often many of you go to your doctor's office and uh you feel dismissed um your labs are drawn and you go in there you tell something's going on with you you're not feeling right you describe your symptoms they run your labs and they come back and tell you you're fine 
and that there's nothing wrong. And you know that there is something wrong. You go home, you have less clarity, you have self-doubt. You feel shame a little bit because you feel like there's something wrong with you for having these symptoms because there's no answer for them. There's a lot of different things we go through. We're all different how we experience that roadblock when we hit it, but it's a roadblock. And um, that lack of solutions in the past just led to people just kind of suffering in silence. With the advent of the internet, you know, doctors got so angry at the internet. I think in the first 20 years of the internet, or even still are angry about the internet. And they're so condescending to it. Because when you're desperate now, and you feel isolated, and you have these symptoms, and you don't know what to do, sooner or later, you're going to start researching it yourself to try and understand what's happening with you. And so you spend time on the internet trying to grasp what's going on and, and you investigate your symptoms and, and you find that your symptoms match a certain pathology. Like if you look up that you have PMS and have these really bad periods and you're, 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 and you're anxious, you're irritable and you're upset, that's PMS, you know? And you look it up and the most common cause of that is going to be low progesterone. So then you go to your doctor and say, you know, my, my progesterone is, seems like it would be off. I'd like to run my progesterone. And then they run the lab and say they run at the wrong time of the month and, or any time of the month, because this is where it gets weird is they'll say that your progesterone range throughout the month, it's normal in the first half of the cycle for it to be like 0.2. That's okay in the first half of the cycle. The second half of the cycle, the height of it is 23. So if you present to clinic with your physician and you tell them, hey, I really want this progesterone tested, and they test it and say it's 0.4, they're going to say that's fine because they look at the reference range for the whole month long, even though they maybe drew in the, the second half of the cycle or even the first half of the cycle. But still, they're going to say because 0.2 is normal to, to 23, say, you're in that range. I know that sounds so complicated. And in a way it is, but... but I use this analogy with my patients all the time. If I were to go to your place of work and try and do your job, I would probably do a terrible job. And that doesn't mean you're working at a job too. That could be like at your house, you know, if you're raising kids and stuff. I'm trying to figure out your rhythm and, and how you do things, your steps, your day progression. I would do horrible at it, right? And, and, and I wouldn't figure it out. And any job that I just jumped into. But if you spent time with me and you taught me how to do your job and you trained me, I could, after a while, pick it up pretty good. Medicine's the same way. There's a lot of arrogance in medicine, so they'll be like, you can never figure this out. This is beyond you. I don't agree. This is not some magic that we perform. This is not, you know, some kind of strange thing. This is it's pretty straightforward stuff. I'll be honest with you. Um, and I believe in my heart that if I spend time with you and explain these things with repetition and as clear as possible and from as many different perspectives as I can, you will understand this. And in truth, you deserve to understand this. So when you go back to your doctor and, and you tell me we're on that progesterone panel because you think that's what's wrong and they run it and they tell you you're normal, even though it isn't normal because they're not verifying the time of the month it was done. And they're not verifying the reference range that's appropriate to the time that you drew the lab. And they're just basically saying you're within this range. They're just flat out invalidating you, you, you get sent back home again. And that's just, I, most of you, that's what I hear. That sense of like hopelessness. And then what do you do? You look up online, you know, going out there and buying a bunch of supplements that they say are going to help you because that's where you're left to now. And, and sometimes those supplements will help, but I mean, come on, you know, look out on the internet. There's a lot of garbage out there. You know, there's a lot of people that are preying upon you because you're not getting really good care. And I'm not against supplements at all. I'm against using things that you don't need. There'll be people who'll be taking um, some herb or some nutrient, some vitamin. And it's not that it's bad, it's just that it's not specific to you or what you need. You know, and, and taking that, you won't have any results. So you're even more frustrated and you're spending money on something now that you don't even know if it works. My job with my patients, and if I use a supplement, sometimes I'll use a supplement. 
You know, I just did with a patient. I was giving this one supplement. It was a, a salt palmetto to lower something called dihydrotestosterone. And, you know, 30 days after using it, their dihydrotestosterone went down by 30%. So I used a supplement. I ran the labs before and after, and I verified it worked. So even using supplements, you want your doctor by your side. You know, you don't want someone invalidating you and sending you off into the wilderness to figure this out on your own. How do we get to this place? How, how do we get here? How do we get here in medicine? Where, do this, where does this all happen? Think about reference ranges, and this is the truth, and this is a moment of clarity for you and everyone out there. Reference ranges are based upon 95% of the population. They take a whole bunch of people, and they put them together, and they run their labs. And anybody in the top 2.5% is considered too high. And anybody in the bottom 2.5% is considered too low. If you're within 95% of the average, you're fine. That's it. That's what a reference range is. It's the average of the population. And for some reason or other, they believe that people at the top 2.5 and the bottom 2.5 must be sick. This makes zero sense. Zero sense whatsoever when it comes to treating medically. Now, if we're gonna look at it from an odds perspective, you can say, okay, it is true. If you're outside that reference range, you are above the the 2.5 or the the 2.5 either way that you're 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 outside the normal range but that does not define pathology and if you're in the middle of it and you're considered in the normal range that still does not define pathology it's just the statistic is different it has to be seen that way thyroid which we're going to do a great presentation on shortly in the next one thyroid t3 active hormone that does all the work. Reference range is 2.0 to 4.8, okay? The woman at 4.8 feels very different from the woman at 2.0. The woman at 4.8 scores higher on memory tests than the woman at 2.0 consistently. The woman at 4.8 is better cardiovascular health than the woman at 2.0. There are so many reasons why you'd want to put the person here. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If you present to clinic, you see your doctor, you're 2.1, 2.2, your doctor's like, nah, you're fine. You're normal. You're in the normal range. You're in the average range, but that doesn't mean you're not suffering from pathology. All too often, they wait for you to cross that magic number of 2.0 before they treat for the thyroid. If they're using T3, which often they don't, but still, a lot of times you see your doctor wait to cross a magic line before they treat, and you're not binary. There's not a magic gateway that happens when you cross that one threshold. As you move along the spectra with your health, your health suffers along the spectra like a frog in the pot, so to speak. The hotter it gets, the worse it is. But you shouldn't wait till it boils. As soon as you see the temperature going up, you need to correct the issue. So, so these reference ranges are very much considered like on and off. If you're in it, you're fine. If you're not in it, you're not fine. And again, you are a human being on a spectra and your wellness occurs inside that, 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 that curve, inside that range. You're in there somewhere as your optimal health. That's the job of the physician to figure that out. Another thing that comes back to these reference ranges is these reference ranges were developed non-specific to women. You know, I'll just speak to my base. I know most of the people who watch this are women, so I'll just let's speak to you very clearly on this. You know, some of the reference ranges are separated for men and women, like sex hormones, like progesterone and, and testosterone and estrogen. Okay, that is separated out. But a lot of them are not. They're just universal, men and women. Thyroid is one of those. Cortisol is another one. They're just, but we know that women are different than men. We know this. But they haven't done enough research and they have not separated you out by your sexes yet, which they should for most labs. Why is this so important? This is another reason why this is so important. 80% of the decisions that doctors make, on average, statistically speaking, 80% of decisions doctors make are based upon information provided on laboratory reports. You know, 80% of our decisions are based upon laboratory reports. And these laboratory reports are generated. And if a doctor sees you outside of the range, that's when they're going to treat you. And they rely on that range. And that range, as I mentioned, is only based upon averages and not specific to you as a woman, just specific to humanity on average. Another 
thing that I think it's important for us to let sink in is, is that the reference ranges have been consistently changing over time. And that's because the health of our population has been changing over time. Blood sugar averages seem to be changing. Um, recently, there was a change in the, the reference ranges for carbon dioxide, moving people to being a little bit more acidic on the reference ranges. There's been um, reference ranges to uh, the glucose um, that was recently increased. Um, LabCorp in 2017 uh, changed the reference range of testosterone for men. And that was not based upon what's healthy. It was based upon what's average. And we all know that the reference ranges for testosterone are going down for men because, you know, testosterone levels are going down and, and sperm counts are going down and, and we know blood sugar is going up. So instead of staying, saying the reference range was made based upon research on what's healthy, we're doing the reference range based upon what's average. And as the average becomes less healthy, we're going to keep you in that reference range. So now the reference ranges you're being given are not always what's healthy. It's more based upon what's normal which is really weird. I want to quote something from the British Medical Journal that they published um, in 2018. I think they knocked it out of the park with this. You know, it is often assumed that a result outside the limit signals disease and a result within health. Um, however, this range is correctly termed the reference interval. The clinical risk from a measured value is continuous, not binary. Binary. Uh, the reference interval provides a point of reference against which to interpret an individual's results rather than defining the normality itself. Nerd speak, what it means. It doesn't matter if you're inside or out. What matters is, is your health and, and me understanding you within that curve and interpreting you within that range and your symptoms relative to it. It's so important to see you as an individual every single time. So the takeaway from this is that even though you're inside the reference range, that does not mean that you're ideal. And just because you're in the reference range doesn't mean that what you're experiencing is not valid. Also, if you're outside the reference range, that doesn't mean you're unhealthy. You are an individual. You need to be treated as an individual. And you want your doctor to understand you as an individual. When your physician has a really good grasp on pathology and physiology and, you know, whatever field you're, you're experiencing, whatever your field you're seeing your physician for, in this case, endocrinology, your physician should understand the interplay between all of these hormones, all these chemicals they're testing for, all these compounds that are natural to your body. They should understand the interplay between all of them and understand how your symptoms fit into those. And they should understand how to make a shift to those that would adjust how you feel. That is why we went to medical school. Any monkey can look at an algorithm when you walk in the door and say, PMS, dysmenorrhea, birth control. Any monkey can do that. That's not medicine. Medicine is figuring you out. So labs are essential. Understanding the reference ranges and why the reference ranges are there are a key component to starting our our. our it's like I'm building a foundation for us. The first step is just basically dispelling the myth that reference ranges are absolute. They're not. They're not. Some doctors say you shouldn't be treating someone who's inside the reference range. They should spend more time studying medicine, to be honest, because that's not valid or accurate. So ending on that positive note, <laughs> I hope this is hopeful. Um, Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I'll be making more of these videos about labs uh, moving forward just to make sure I give you a good uh, uh, list of things to refer to. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time.